Most emergency kits are going to come with one of these. It's an emergency blanket made out of mylar. But I had the question, does this actually do much of anything and is it good enough? That's what we're going to explore today. Hello my friends, welcome back. This is Pantry Preparedness. My name is Rick and today I'm doing some legitimate testing on an emergency blanket. These Mylar blankets have been going around for a long time. Basically every emergency kit has one uh, and I think there's probably a pretty good reason for that, but I'm not one to just sort of trust that things are going to do what people say they're going to do. I kind of have to test it myself, which is one of the things I love to do here on this channel. And today that's what I'm going to show you. Last winter, I went up into the mountains uh, in kind of a place where we love to, to hang out nearby here in Idaho. And uh, I decided I was going to test one of these out. But in order to make that testing a little bit more scientific, I decided rather than just wrap myself in this and say, do I feel warmer? I would do something just a little bit more measured. In fact, what I did is I took a meat thermometer with two probes on it. I taped one to my chest and I taped one to my back. Um, just on just on the outside of my shirt. I wore a fairly thin shirt, so some of my body temperature was definitely like there on it. Um, and there on the front, there on the back. And I started out by getting a baseline reading. Now, this was late winter, so it was starting to warm up outside and also with my, my body heat on it. The temperature readings on these thermometers were 51 degrees on the front, 54 degrees on my back. So not like super, super cold, but definitely chilly. Then I pulled out an emergency blanket. I've, I don't think I've ever opened one of these before. And I started unwrapping it. And one of the first things I noticed was like pulling it apart for the first time. It was actually like a huge pain to unfold because it was all like sticking together. I had to peel everything apart and there's a lot of static, a lot of friction. Um, and so not something that you're gonna be able to pull out and just like have on you in 10 seconds. I know I probably sound a little bit whiny, but when you're reviewing stuff, you kind of have to be willing to point out the flaws. And so this is one of the things that these things, when they're wrapped up super tight, they take a little bit to get apart. So it's going to be a couple minutes till you're actually ready to go. But then I wrapped it around myself. In fact, I started out, I kind of laid it out on the ground on the snow. You can see here, I sat down on it and then wrapped it around me. And then I kept an eye on that meat thermometer to see where the temperature kind of stopped increasing, if it increased at all. And there are a few important things that I noticed when I was using this. First of all, you can see with a standard emergency blanket, this one is 84 inches by 52 inches, which is like 70 feet by a little over four feet. So it's pretty decent size, but still, I could only really wrap it around my torso. So my legs were pretty much exposed still. I could sit on it and it could keep like a, this nice waterproof barrier between me and the snow under me, which was nice but I couldn't completely cover myself. So my feet, they stayed cold. But on the flip side, these only cost like around a dollar a piece, a little bit lower, more, a little bit less, depending on how many of them you buy at once and where you buy them. They're super cheap. And so having a couple of them on hand, I probably could wrap myself all the way up and it would have been just fine. But this was the cool thing is I noticed really, really quickly that I actually was quite a bit warmer. And that's for two reasons. First of all, not only was this, you know, keeping me dry from sitting off the snow, but it was also keeping the wind off me. Mylar is a great windbreak material, and so I wasn't getting that chilling effect of the wind. Now, the chilling effect of the wind is something that that temperature probe is not going to pick up, but it legitimately cools you off faster and makes you colder. Like, it makes it more dangerous if there's a breeze when it comes to staying warm and staying safe and staying alive. But then second of all, the Mylar was doing what Mylar is supposed to do, which is it was reflecting the radiant heat, the heat that radiates off my body, it was reflecting a lot of it back to me. They say these can reflect 90, some people say like nearly 100% of your heat back at you. Of course, only to the extent that you're able to completely enclose it, right? But it will bounce the heat back to you, most of it. And it did a good job of that. After a few minutes and after those t temperature probes sort of settled out, the front temperature probe on my chest measured 69 degrees. Before it was 51. So that's a pretty good increase, right? 18 degrees warmer on my front than it had been before. And on my back, it went from 54 degrees without it to 65 degrees. Now, why would my back not warm up as much as my front? I think the biggest reason for that is I was sitting on a hillside in the snow. And so 
my behind was still sitting on, literally on the snow with only this little thin blanket between us. Which brings up the next point about my alarm materials. They don't insulate, like at all. There's no insulation here. And so that conduction heat transfer, which is what happens, I'm getting all like engineer on you. I was a chemical engineer before, but there's those three different forms of heat transfer. I talked about the radiating heat that was coming off my body being bounced back. I talked about that breeze. That's called convection, and that dramatically speeds up heat transfer, makes you cold faster, which is why the wind chill is a real thing, and it's something that our bodies feel, because our bodies are measuring how quickly the heat is leaving our body, not the actual temperature of the air around us. But the conductive heat transfer, that's when an object that's warm and an object that's cold are touching each other, and as they're touching, those warm objects start warming up the colder objects, and in the process, those warmer objects cool down. The warm object in this case being me, particularly my keister. So overall, Mylar blanket, worth it? Yeah, worth it, worth a buck and worth the tiny amount of space and tiny amount of weight that it adds to my emergency kit. But it's not the only option. There are others that I absolutely prefer and that I also tested too. I went ahead and I picked up one of these. This is the Life Bivy from Go Time Gear. You can pick these up on Amazon. Now, here's the first big difference between this and this. This costs a dollar, this costs $20. I paid $19.99 plus tax for this. But as I sat in it, when I first pulled it up over me, I immediately noticed a difference. I was immediately substantially warmer. The temperature as I warmed up um, over the next few minutes raised up to 74 degrees on my front and 67 on my back. At 74 degrees, I mean, we're, this is like comfortable room temperature in the winter, right? And so it's a safe temperature for me to sit at for a longer period of time. My back was only at 67 degrees, but still, I mean, that's the temperature I like to keep my house in the summertime is about 67 to 68 degrees. It's a nice, fairly comfortable temperature. Everywhere again, except my behind, <laughs> where it was still really cold. You can see here in this footage from when I actually did this testing, you can see that, I mean, this one was bright orange. It does come in all sorts of different colors. For an emergency blanket, I love the orange. It's gonna make me stand out. Uh, and in most cases, that's what I'm gonna want. I'm gonna wanna be found maybe in a search and rescue kind of situation. Maybe there's other situations where I wouldn't wanna be found where maybe a green one would have been better. You can see that all of the seams here have this black kind of tape material over them. They're sealed together in a way that it seems pretty strong, but this tape helps ensure that even where it's connected, that they're good and waterproof. Another thing I noticed when I climbed in, I climbed in with my hiking boots still on, in part because I wanted to see how it would hold up if, you know, if I was just freezing and I just opened this thing up and crawled right into it, how well would it hold up? Would I just tear right through it? But no, the material held up quite well. Now, around like sharp objects and stuff, if I was sitting like on twigs and stuff, it scratched up and did would easily puncture holes in this thing. But it, it held up remarkably well considering that my giant size 12 and a half feet with my big boots on slid right in there and didn't really have any trouble. A couple other things of note. This is pretty good size. It covered me from feet all the way up past my shoulders. It wasn't long enough to go up all the way over my head to completely enclose me, which is a little bit funny because in their advertising, they say it's a complete survival shelter, which it's only really a shelter if it can completely enclose you and this one couldn't, but pretty, pretty close. It keeps the wind off of you. It's exactly the same material on the inside as these Mylar blankets. It just seems to have maybe a little bit of a coating on the outside. I'm not sure, maybe it's just colored, but it's also very thin, very lightweight. In fact, that whole thing just fits in this little tiny container. I actually took this one, and once I dried it out, I rolled it back up and fit it right back in the bag, and I think you could use it multiple times. Would I use it as like my backpacking sleeping bag and maybe in the spring and summer? Probably not. Um, I would be concerned that for multiple days it wouldn't hold up very well, that at some point it would probably tear and then now you've got air blowing through it and it's not going to keep you as warm. But in a pinch, I mean, it, it certainly does the job and for an emergency, I think it's an absolutely good thing to have on hand. But there is that issue. There's the issue of the price. It's, again, I can have 20 of these for the price of this. I don't want to carry 20 of these in my 72 hour kit. And this is super cool. I actually think that this would be much better help 
in most emergency situations. And I mean, this does come with this cheap plastic whistle. So there's that too. But I thought there's gotta be another option. So of course I had to test another option. I tested this one. This is from eSky. It's an emergency bivy. Um, on the website, they called it an emergency sleeping bag, but emergency divvy for outdoor survival use. And when I opened it up, this one was green. And I think this one maybe comes in multiple colors too. But when I opened it up and actually like got into it, I discovered that basically these are the exact same thing. The seams are taped in the exact same way. I mean, honestly, the thought that came to my mind was I would not be surprised if these are manufactured in the exact same factory by the exact same people. The only difference was I thought as I put them on that maybe this one was slightly longer. It might have, might have been an extra two inches long. But this one still covered me from toes all the way past my shoulders uh, without any trouble. And when it came to the actual temperature, once, the, once again, the, the heat on those temperature probes, once that sort of settled down and my, the temperature in there rose and then sort of leveled off, the temperature probe on the front in both cases was 74 degrees, exactly the same. This one on the back, I only got a, t a reading of 64, where this one I got a reading actually of 67. I might've misspoke earlier. And I don't think that was because there's a, any difference at all in the materials in these things. I think it has more to do with the fact that I tried out a little bit sort of laying back on my back for a little bit um, to see again sort of how well it would trap in my heat because I know it's not gonna insulate. So I was curious to see, well, will it keep my back reasonably warm because it'll reflect my heat back to me? Will that be enough? And of course, I already kind of knew the answer. Again, back to the keister but I decided to test that out and the answer was no. And then I sat there for a little while and the back, the probe on my back never got back up above 64. So that's the best reading I got on this one, but I also didn't want to sit there all day. And this one did get up to 67, but both of them were 74 on the front. I couldn't tell any distinguishable difference between them, again, except maybe the length. And here's the other cool things. First of all, this one also comes with um, an ultra cheap compass but it is a compass, so there's, it's something. Uh, I don't know if you'll keep it on there or not. The bag, I mean, the little cordage on the bag, this one is like real paracord, and this one's a lot thinner string. But other than that, even the bags are basically the same. Like, the material is almost identical. Uh, they both have kind of a grid pattern stitched onto them that looks slightly different. Um, this one does have the cool skull and stuff, though, and this one doesn't. Uh, it's a little bit more plain, but I'm not paying a lot extra for that. And then it also comes with a whistle. This one's an even cheaper little whistle. Maybe it doesn't work quite as well as that one, but it still has a whistle. So there's that. So how do they actually compare in price? Well, I told you this one cost me $19.99. This only cost me $14.89. So you're like, okay, well, that's cool. That's like 25% cheaper. It cost me $14.89 for two of them. And they're the same thing as this. So I think with this one, what you're getting is better marketing, better packaging. It looks more reputable, but in the end, I think they're the exact same product. So here's my point. When it comes to emergency blankets, I think you absolutely should have, at a minimum, at least one of these emergency blankets in every 72 hour kit or every emergency kit that you're gonna have. It is actually a really, really good product. And these are super cheap, so don't let money stop you. However, these were able to raise the temperature around my body by at least five degrees. Yeah, five degrees warmer with this on than this. And it covered me all the way from my toes up past my shoulders. Whereas this, I was only able to wrap it around my torso. Another thing to consider is if you're gonna have to sleep in one of these things, you're never gonna stay wrapped up in this once you fall asleep, right? And unless you're one of those people who just like does not move during the night, this is gonna come off and you're gonna get cold again. This is a sleeping bag. You're just gonna stay inside of it. It's, it's gonna keep you warmer. And as long as you can get off the cold ground, so if you can elevate yourself at all, this is gonna be able to keep you alive. But as far as not freezing to death, these are gonna do a much better job than this. However, there's a much higher price tag. These cost about a dollar. These ones cost $20 and these cost about seven and a half dollars. So what am I doing in my emergency kit? I'm having one of these in every one of my emergency kits. 
And depending on how much space I have, I might throw an extra one of these in mine and maybe my wife's just to have in case there's an extra need. There's also some really cool uses for these emergency blankets that I'm excited to try out and to tell you a little bit more about in future videos. I also love testing cool things. So if there's anything else that you would like me to test out because you're curious, how well do these work or which products are better, these or that for emergency preparedness, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to do the testing to save you the time and the money and help you make sure that you have the right stuff in your emergency preparedness gear. Until then, stay safe and I hope to see you in our next video.